Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World. One of the most eagerly awaited new musicals is Mrs. Doubtfire, and it's returning to Broadway. They had just three previews, and then everything shut down. Well, now they will open on December 5th, and I'm here at the Stephen Sondheim Theater to catch up with the show's star, Rob McClure, and I caught up with him on his dinner break after rehearsal before a night's nice performance. I am so excited to be here with you outside of your theater. You're about to open, yes. finally open on Broadway, Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> How excited are you? It's been a, a, a long climb back here, you know, and uh, just last night we had our uh, our fourth preview, and afterward we, we, you know, the curtain came down and Jen Gambatis held us all on stage and said, wait, wait, everybody, that was preview number four, and everyone applauded, and I thought, why are we applauding for preview number, oh, we stopped after preview number three. We never got to preview number four. So we finally got to preview number four and we got super emotional. And um, having everybody back and, and the crowds are just as excited yeah. to be back as we are and it's super exciting. Okay, so for those who may not know, you had done three previews. Yes. But you were on this, you know, when you're working on a show, you're on this train that keeps rolling down the track. I oh, mean, yeah. you had this incredible out-of-town run where audiences fell in love with the show. Yes. You came to New York, you were teching, you had previews, and oh, yeah. all of a sudden you had three previews, and then you were told, Broadway shutting down. Literally, leave yeah. everything where it is and go home. And all of these theaters became these little time capsules of 4.30 on Thursday, March 12th with everybody's stuff right where it was. You know, um, we, we we lost a beloved cast member, Doreen Montalvo Mann, in the interim. Um, not to COVID, but she passed uh, uh, while we were gone, tragically. And, um, and, you know, her dressing room station was here to be found the way it was on Thursday, March 12th, when we came back into the theater to start this process. It was, it's a wild thing, seeing all these theaters that were frozen in yeah. time finally coming back to life. And, um, you know, for those of us who believe these theaters are churches, it's a religious experience, you know. So are you able to put the last 18 months into perspective? You know, I, I, the show was poignant to begin with. But suddenly a show about how far would you go to be with those you love again means something it didn't mean yeah. 19 months ago. And I, you know, I as a parent, I, I had a, a one-year-old when we were starting this, and now I've got a, almost a three-year-old, and how far would I go for her? Uh, you know, that means more to me. And I think we've all been through such madness in the last 19 months that a show about, you know, the lengths to which you would go for your family and, and, and what it means to, to be a family, redefining your family, to be those you choose to spend time with. And we were all doing that, right? Yeah. We were all at home going, who's my bubble? Who are my people? Who is my family? And, uh, and this show celebrates that to the, to the nth degree. And it's, uh, it, it's making people laugh in a way that is hugely emotionally resonant. The, the laughs are coming with tears because the message of family is, is profound now. What was it like the first day you came back? The marquee is lit. I mean, you, you came through the stage door. Like, what went through your mind? It's wild. You know, you come in and, and my dressing room station, yeah. the first thing that happened is I walked into my dressing room and there, was a, there were 10 pairs of little spring shorts that I had bought for my daughter the afternoon everything shut down that she will never wear because she's, she's outgrown them. Right? Okay, okay. <laughs> exactly, with the tags still on them. Um, but also like all of my notes that I had been yeah. taking from Jerry Zach's the afternoon that it shut down, you know. Um, it's a wild thing uh, and reviewing what, what the show was and what it was becoming at the yeah. moment that everything stopped. Okay, so let's talk about that first rehearsal back. Yeah. I mean, nobody was in a rehearsal room for 19 months and there was that first day the company's back together again. You're with Jerry Zach's. I mean, how emotional was that? It was wild. Um, and, and you know what was interesting is that Jerry, Jerry's old school, you know what I mean? He's been around forever and he, he is the king of what he does. And he admitted to us that his instinct was like, let's, let's get back to work. But he very quickly realized and respectfully acknowledged that we're all different people than we were 19 months ago. And things need to be discussed. And Doreen needs to be properly grieved along with the other 700,000 people who died in the last 19 months. We can't just jump back in to business as usual. We all need time. Um, and, and all of us were acknowledging, you know, we haven't been doing eight shows a week for 19 months. There's stamina that needs to be, you know, we're all having imposter syndrome going like, can I still do this? I hope I can still do this. So they were very, um, you know, they, we were treated not only as great performers, but as human beings. And I cannot thank them enough for their patience and their, their thoughtfulness and how they got us back on the, the treadmill. Um, because it wasn't 
all right, let's get back to where we were and pretend like nothing happened. No, everything happened. And our show should be a reflection of now. Our show should not serve the world as it was 19 months ago. It should serve the world now. And that takes growth on everyone's behalf. And I, I was thrilled to see them acknowledge that and work towards that. Yeah. See, I love that, but that's Jerry Zaks. That's, that's the right. brilliance of someone like that who's saying, we're not doing the same thing we did 19 months ago. We have to start fresh, yeah. and we have to look at it through new eyes again. Yeah, and, when, uh, and that's when you learn that he's not just a yeah. great director, but a great man and a great father and a great, the way he talks about his family and the way he talks about the Hillard family yeah. in reference to his own family and our families. And it's, uh, that's when you know you're in good hands. Okay, what is it like working with Jerry Zaks? This has to be one of the biggest pinch me moments of your career. For yeah. sure, I'll tell you a very funny story. <laughs> Uh, about five days into our first rehearsal process, this was for the reading. Yeah. So two, two years ago, two and a half years ago, um, long before the Seattle out of town. And uh, I'm in rehearsal with Jerry Zaks, and we're bouncing off each other, and I'm feeling good about my comedy. And I go home, and I tell my wife, and I'm like, I'm kind of feeling myself. Like, me and Jerry Zaks have the same sense of humor. And she goes, do you think it has anything to do with the fact that every Broadway show you were obsessed with as a kid were Jerry's. You saw that revival of Funny Thing Happen on the Way to the Forum with Nathan Lane and Whoopi Goldberg and David Allen Greer. How many times? You saw Guys and Dolls. How many times? You saw that Lend Me a Tenor. How many times? I think you might have the same sense of humor because he built yours. <laughs> I, I mean, love like, that. Oh, yeah. You know, we don't have the same sense of humor. I have his sense of humor because he taught me what musical comedy was, is. Um, so I, I'm just getting to bounce off of him. I, it really does feel like he's been my mentor yeah. for decades and just didn't know it. 